In this series of videos, we've been talking about budgeting. In the first video, we learned how to prepare a schedule of expected cash collections. In this video, we're going to learn how to prepare a production budget. So let's read through the question. I'll talk about production budgets as we go. BC companies uh, budgeted, oh, as always, if you've stumbled across this video, the problems are linked down below. So please click on the problem. You can have your own copy of it. You can fill in the chart yourself. Okay, anyway, BC company has budgeted unit sales as follows, April, May, June, July, uh, and there they are. It says the company is preparing a, a production budget for the second quarter of 2013. Well, let's think about the second quarter of 2013, assuming a calendar year. January, February, March, that's quarter one. April, May, June, that's quarter two. So April, May, and June is quarter two. Not sure why they gave us July. That's in the third quarter. Maybe they're throwing us off, or maybe we'll use that information later. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, past experience has shown that the end of month inventory levels will be equal to 10% of the following month's sales. Okay, so when we end a month, we want to have some inventory left over. That makes sense. We don't have the cupboards totally bare at the end of the month. We want to have a bit of inventory left over. The inventory at the end of March, so that's before this, was 10,000 units. So we started the quarter with 10,000 units of inventory. Okay, prepare the uh, budget for the quarter. Now, I have already filled in the title which is just a three-liner, name of the company, BC Company, name of the budget, production budget, and for the quarter ended and the quarter end date. Now again, the second quarter is January, March, April, May, June, and of course we've got our quarter totals there. And so let's take a look at this one. We're going to start with our beginning, uh, sorry, our uh, our sales totals and our budgeted sales here is 100, 140, 130. Now this budget tends to help to do a month at a time and I'll show you why in a minute but we can certainly start there. So 100, 140, 130 and of course the theory here is look this is a production budget if I plan to sell 100,000 units in April, I better make 100,000 units to sell them, right? Like, I have to have them on hand, so I better make them, and I better plan to make them. If I want to have 140,000 units sold in May, I better plan to make them, right? i got to have my staffing, my raw materials ordered, and I've got to be planning to make them. So that's what this production budget is all about, just how many units we're planning to make. Now, not only do I have to have the 100,000 units that I'm going to make in April, ready to sell in April, I need 10% of next month's ready to go. The, that's this sentence that says, uh, past experience has shown that end of month inventory levels will be equal to 10% of the following month's sales. So in April, I not only need uh, 100,000 units ready to go, I actually need 100,000 plus 10% of make. I want to have it at the ready. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add that in, and that's my desired ending inventory. And so my desired ending inventory for April is going to be 10% of May. So 10% of May is 14,000 units. For May, 10% of June is 13,000 units. For June, 10% of July is, uh, I don't know, oh wait. That's why they gave us this $150,000 uh, units. I knew they gave it that, that, was, that number for a reason. 10% of 150,000 units is, of course, 15,000. Okay, so far so good. So I'm going to do a little subtotal here. This is my total needs. This is everything I need. Uh, 100 plus 14 is 114. And again, let's look at April. I not only need to make what I'm going to sell, I also have to have some inventory left over at the end of the quarter. If I don't have inventory left over, then I'm in trouble, right? So I, I not only need the 100,000 I plan to sell, but I need 14,000 more to get me ready for May. May, it's 153,000. And June, it's 145,000. So those are my total needs. But something that mitigates this need is the fact that I might have some inventory already on hand to start. So if I already have inventory to begin, for example, in April, I said, oh, I, I've got 100 that I'm going to need because I'm going to sell 100, plus I want to have 14 left over. That means I need 114. But when I started April, I had 10,000 units already. I don't need to remake those. 
So I'm going to deduct my beginning inventory. So my beginning inventory for uh, April was 10,000. I don't need to make those. So let's do a bit of math here. 114 minus 10,000 is 104. That's what I actually need to make. That is my required production. So again, let's just look at April on its own. In April, we said, hey, we're planning to make or sell 100,000 units. So when we do our production budget, we say, okay, I'm planning to sell 100,000 units. I better make 100,000 units. But not only do I need to make 100,000 units, I need to make 14,000 extra units to be ready for May. So I need 114 in total. But I started April with some inventory. I started April with 10,000 units sitting there. I don't need to remake those, so I actually only need to make 104,000 units. Okay, moving on, uh, our beginning inventory uh, for May. What do you think our beginning inventory for May is? Well, the beginning of May, May 1st, is the same as the end of April, April 30th. We think April 30th at 11.59 p.m. versus May 1st at 12.01 a.m. It's the same number. What we end April with, we're going to begin May with. So 153 minus uh, 14,000 is 139,000, I believe. Uh, and June, we're going to begin June. June's beginning inventory is going to be the same as the ending for May. Again, May 31st, June 1st, uh, it's, you know, they're just seconds apart. The end of May 31st, the beginning of June 1st. Uh, so uh, 13,000 units I'm not going to need to make. And again, just reading through June's. 130,000 is what I'm planning to sell in June, plus I gotta have 15,000 ready for July, that's 145,000 I need, but coming out of May I have 13,000 units sitting there, therefore I only need to make 132,000 units in June. So now we've got to do our totals column, but it's not really a totals column, I call this the for the quarter column. So what were my budgeted sales for the quarter? hundred. 240, 370. That was my budgeted sales for the call a quarter, and you can see that's just the total, 370. My desired ending inventory. What's my desired ending inventory for the quarter? Well, here's a place where people make a mistake, a really common mistake. They go, oh, total it up, 14, 27, uh, 42. No, that's not your desired ending inventory for the quarter. Your desired ending inventory for the quarter, let's think about a calendar. What's the last day of the quarter? Last day of the quarter is June 30th. What's my desired ending inventory on June 30th? Well, it's 15,000 units. That's what I need to end June with. I don't need to end June with 14 plus 13 plus 15, like uh, 42,000 units. I only need to end June with 15,000 units. That's my desired ending inventory for the quarter. If I total my total needs, I think I screw it up. I don't think you get the right answer. 370 plus 15 is 385. So I've just totaled these two to get the 385. My beginning inventory, I've got to ask the same question. What's my beginning inventory for the quarter? Well, it's not a total of these three numbers now. It's the beginning of the quarter. The beginning of the quarter is April. So the beginning of April, I had 10,000 inventory. 385 minus 310 is 375 double underline. I was about to put dollar signs on this thing. Of course it's not dollars. Everything here is in units and I think we're good to go. So a quick comment about this budget and why it's powerful. Well first we need to know how many units we're planning to sell. The sales budget kind of drives everything. But once I know how much I'm going to sell then I can decide okay how many units do I need to make. Now that fits into a bit of a puzzle here. If I know for example in April I'm going to make 104,000 units that can tell me a lot about how many staff I need to hire. It can tell me about how much raw material I need to purchase. It can tell you a lot about the company's costs over the coming months, and it can help you make plans. So this is a small piece in the overall puzzle. In, uh, it, when you're beginning, I think it's helpful to look at each small piece. At the end of the day, and probably in your class, you're going to put it all together and do some big, massive uh, master budgets. That's it for this video on a production budget. Stay tuned for the next part. Thanks.